Did you know that a plant known for its spiky, aggressive exterior could actually be edible? Artichokes, as it turns out, are actually a species of thistle. And today I'm going to talk to you about three different ones that you can find around here. You've probably actually seen them in the nature conservancy areas, uh, on the, all those trails and everywhere. Me, I'm actually into botany, but I don't have any degrees yet, so I've gone to government atlases and websites and journals to teach you all correctly all about thistles. Um, despite it actually being the National Flower of Scotland, I'm going to teach you about the native species, uh, not the native, but the species that you can find here in Northern California. So without further ado, let's begin with the milk thistle. The milk thistle is useful medicinally, but not really environmentally. So it's characterized by its shiny leaves that are marbled green and white. Now, I really love plants, but I don't actually own any thistles because they're actually really hard to grow indoors. So I've drawn you a little botanist's drawing. So as I said, it's got shiny leaves, the marbled green and white, so the white is going to be the white and the dark is going to be the green, and then the, sh um, the spikes that are characteristic of the milk thistle, and then the bulb with of course the iconic purple flowers that I didn't colour purple. But uh, <laughs> that description I got from um, the Invasive Plant Atlas. Um, it's also called Mary's Thistle, or Blessed Thistle, because it was thought that the Virgin Mary um, was fleeing from somewhere and her milk spilled upon a thistle and now it is blessed with the green and white marbling that you see today. That's um, a theory from John McCrory's website on milk thistles. Um, also from that website I found out that um, the British herbalist Culpepper thought that it was a good remedy for kidneys and liver elements and as it turns out today it is really good for that. Um, so while it may be blessed in one way, it is not blessed environmentally. Um, it actually really does really well in the uh, Mediterranean climates. And that's why it does really well here in California, because on the last two line, that's Mediterranean areas are exactly the same as where California is. And that's actually really rare. That's why we have the same climate as there. Um, I found that information out from the Milk Thistle article from the Noxious Weed Control Program's website. And if you couldn't tell from the noxious weed part of it, it's invasive. It thrives, but other species do not as a result of its presence. It's actually classified as a class A weed, so that means it must be removed on site. So luckily, then we've got the California thistle that's got the potential for a less sad fate. Um, they're actually mostly found on the coast, but they don't really have the same medicinal properties as the milk thistle. It's a member of the uh, sunflower family, like all thistles are. Um, it's got dusty magenta flowers and a collection of many of them. Oh, let me get my drawing up for you again. I've done another one of these, but of the California thistle. So the magenta flowers, same kind of structure, more elliptical, spiny leaves, and of course the iconic thistle bulb. Um, so the collection of the flowers, as I was saying, um, is actually called disc flower or sunflowers family. Uh, because every individual one of these petals that are here is actually its own flower within itself. So some flowers do that, thistles do that. Um, as I said, we've got elliptical leaves as opposed to the milk thistle, or less or more wide. Um, the green bulb here is actually called an invoker, and that's according to the Santa Monica Mountains Trails website on California thistles. Um, so as they may look slightly different, um, the California thistle, if you couldn't get from its name, is actually endemic to California, so it's only found here in the Golden State. Um, Cerzium occidental is its Latin name, and it literally means thistle from the west. Um, I got that information again from the um, Santa Monica Mountains Trails Council, the article on California thistles. So despite me being here first, it is actually sadly less common in places like the Santa Monica Mountains as the invasive species because the, the invasive species will actually kill off the endemic one. Um, so finally, the most exciting one that I've been keeping you guys in suspense about this entire time, the artichoke. It's a species of thistle, if you hadn't got that already, um, and they do have health benefits as well. Um, so all thistles are part of the family Aristocae, or um, the specific globe artichoke species is called um, Cynara scolomus also part of the sunflower family. Um, it was actually introduced to California, and California is actually the supplier for 100% of the 
of all artichokes in the US. So if you were to go to um, the East Coast and buy an artichoke, it would be from California. So that seems kind of crazy to me. Um, that's from the BioWebs article in Wisconsin, um, for the University of Wisconsin. And it's their article on global artichokes. More specifically from California, the city Castroville is actually where the California Artichoke Advisory Board is located and also two-thirds of all the state's crop is located there as well. Um, again, that's from the BioWeb website. Um, it's tasty and it uses treatments in the past for snake bites and anemia. That's from the BioWeb website as well. So we recognize artichoke. You can see the similarities between these two, right? So you've got the bulb here, the stem and then the leaves. You can see how they've got similar structure, but um, we, thistles, oh not thistles, the artichokes will actually bloom just like a thistle does, but we eat them in their juvenile stage so we get all that tasty bloom right in here. This is what we eat. Um, now they are used for food, but also to treat um, intestinal um, problems that stem from dyspepsia, so like nausea, abdominal pain. Um, so it turns out that British herbalist Culpepper was actually kind of right about something with his kidney and liver ailments. Um, so in short, they all see, may seem very similar in structure, but um, they've got discrepancies in use and characteristics that, that sets them apart from each other. So to conclude, the milk thistle has a mysterious namesake, but and similarly strange past medicinal use. The uh, California thistle looks invasive, but it's actually the endemic species to California and the artichoke is a spiky wild plant that we can actually eat. Um, you can see the relation between all of them. So my last final comment I'm going to say for you guys is everyone learns about the history of humans, but it turns out plants actually have fascinating pasts and histories as well, and they possibly even have futures in medicine and food as well. Life is all around us, and it's got millions of things to learn about it. Thank you for listening.